bitch. That's my favorite word. Hey, what up? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, and happy fourth meal. My name is Peter Rosenberg. One ep is life. Hit subscribe. You know all that stuff, but we have so many classic moments in addition to our new episodes every week. Um, lots of classics, including sitting down with an ultimate icon and legend, okay? One of the greatest ever out of Oaktown. Uh, one of the first rappers I ever fell in love with, with that life is too short. Here's me and Saif talking to too short. When you were a kid, you're pre-hip-hop. Really, I mean, as a kid, you were straight pre-hip-hop. Yeah. Like, were you excited about, did you first get familiar with the music that was happening here? Like, the like was it the Sugar Hill Records? Here's and how the, it went. The first thing I ever heard, you heard little, little smidgens of rap before Rapper's, before a rapper's Delight. A little bit, a little bit, but really, that whole... Sugar Hill Records explosion, that kind of just 1979, I heard Rapper's Delight, not long after that, it was records like Freedom, and I started hearing stuff like Spoonie G, and you know, Sequence, and Curtis Blow, and it just was whatever was commercial, but I, I started rapping before I heard a lot of rap, like, like I probably had just heard whatever came out pre-1980, that was my influence as, as far as rap, I heard rap immediately and said, oh, I can do that, that, that was my my take on it so the second you heard it you can't even really put a finger on exactly what it was it was just when I, you heard it you knew you gravitated towards I it i simmered on it for about a year it was uh beginning of ninth grade by the end of ninth grade i was sitting down in front of a tape recorder trying to do it myself just grabbing some instrumentals and just wrapping over them and so then when do you when does when do you do freaky tales freaky tales was an evolution when me and my my rap partner first met we met like 1981 and the whole gist was that um, people who knew him thought he was the only rapper that existed that they could personally touch and know. And people who knew me felt the same way. And they found each other and said, my boy can rap better than your boy. The, the, the classic story. Classic story. That's how everyone comes came together. Go to battle. End up being best friends, like outcasts or whatever. And, um, you know, just, um, what was the question? I don't know. I'm just listening, man. Yeah, but, <laughs> I'm just listening to you tell these stories about how we got to Freaky Tales. Yeah, well, we, we started rapping, you know, just anything that we thought was relevant in the streets, just new slang words, current events around the town, whatever, you know, so that uh, that led us to doing these kind of outlandish um, comedy kind of rhymes, and his, his take was like, he tells a story about like when he was five years old and his tooth fell out, and the tooth fairy went to put her hand under the, under the pillow, and he reaches over like, uh, I don't want no money, bitch, I want to... I want some cocaine, and a, I want you to give me a limousine. I want to go to Vegas, and you're gonna be my prostitute. That was his rap. Wow. My rap was, uh, you know, I was, I was, I had 16 hoes, and that was just, that's just how it was. We, we were kind of like Oakland was big on pimping, so we weren't really rapping saying pimp this, pimp that, early on, but we would constantly use references to the, the Oakland lifestyle. So Freaky Tales was a song I had on that was about these. I always had this thing that I had 16 hoes. That was some kind of... Sick. That was the number. By the way, Cypher Sounds now joining Juan Epstein. There he is. He's here. He's out of the booth. The hey, two shorts here, by the way. What's up, man? I don't know this guy. Y'all know each other or no? Yeah. The 16 hoes were rep always represented 16 bars. Because I, oh. I, was, I was in music classes early on, and I knew how to count bars. I knew a verse was a bar and all this... Uh, a, bar, a verse was 16 bars and all this. So I always had 16 hoes. And um, <laughs> Freaky Tales started as a story about how I got to 16 hoes. And it eventually just kept evolving. Later on, 1987. Damn, that's where we at? We we started. <laughs> yeah, you missed the beginning because we started. I got, I'll listen back. You're going to catch up. Yeah, right? I'll catch okay, up. all right. Yeah, like somewhere like mid 80s, somewhere, I, I signed up with this label, uh, 75 Girls. And I wrote a song. I took the song Freaky Tales and wrote this long ass version about how I met these 75 girls. And it was just fucking. It, if I would have recorded that song like that, it would have been 20 minutes long. And I had it written on paper, 75 girls. It was pages and pages of this, these crazy little basic rhymes about how I met all these girls. So later on, 87, we started our own label, me and a couple of young homies of mine. And I revisited these papers. I was like, Freaky Tales, Freaky Tales. It was always there. It was like it had been, the, the title had been with me since 82. I'd always been like rewriting it and adding to it. And I kind of narrowed it down. A lot, a lot of it was really stupid, like really stupid. You listen to Freaky Tales now, it's like as basic as you can get. Well, that's, but that's part of the sh the charm of Too Short. Exactly, but basic and kind of a little bit of humor, and then it's just a little bit of game, whatever. But I um, 
I narrowed it down to about forty something girls. I put it out. <laughs> it Were was, these based uh, on real girls? No, nah, it was uh, it was it, a mix. There was probably in Freaky Tales. There was probably two or three references to some cult classic uh, Oakland females, like a uh, cult classic. <laughs> what was that? The TP treatment. That was the truth. The TP treatment is all the way at the end, and everybody's like, "What the fuck is that?" It was a, it was a girl's initials, and TP. Those are her initials, and she was uh, she was famous for like you know that just the the super head image before. Damn, what do you think she's doing now? Well, she was kind of. I heard at one point she was a flight attendant. So imagine that. Oh man! Wow, <laughs> flight attendant with the super head. <laughs> Yo, that would be honestly of all the ways her that that TP story could play out. I hope she's still kind of like a sexy older flight attendant. Wouldn't that be a good way for a story to play well, out? That would be nice. But you know. Unrelated. Every time you kind of venture off, and uh, everybody likes these little young hot chicks, and every time you venture off, and just like this older chick is giving me the vibe, it's always like way better. It always turns out to be great, right? Oh, shit, older chicks is right. <laughs> you were always into that, the older chicks? Nope. <laughs> you didn't at first. I still, I'm still not. <laughs> you still love the younger chicks. I, I just venture off every now and then and go, damn, what am I missing out on? But I don't know. Let me see. Let, Let me test it out real quick. As truthfully as you can. I mean, listen. I know we can't. You have an image to uphold. Yeah, but I, I don't really. But how mu how close is too short? How we think of too short in our mind, mm -hmm. and too short the man? Because in our mind, you're literally just fucking nonstop, just different all, right, well, all the time, hot, I different. Tell you, I tell you like this: too short is definitely a character I made up. I definitely feel like in my life, if I had to compare the life that I live to the character too short, I think I've been having way more fun than too short could ever have. Because too short is kind of the character is kind of rude. And I don't think if I if I really carried myself like too short, I don't think I would have been allowed to have this much fun. I'd have an image of just this guy's fucking rude. Like it, it would just be everywhere. <laughs> all he talks about is he yells about getting his all the time. What's wrong with yeah, this? Yeah, rude, it, it would, so I just think that I always as a as a writer, I was always picturing the things that guys would want to say. Like it's just a it's a fucking it's a it's like a hard work to just get a girl to be with you. You know what I mean? It is. Wouldn't it just be easy to just cut the chase and say, all I really want to do is give me I mean, But it's not, but that's not, and they, sometimes it, would never they, get, it would never work. Sometimes they think that, but they can't let it be known or they can't let their friends know. Ice-T once told me, he said, when he when he gets a girl in a car, I don't know if I heard Red, just heard him say it or whatever, he said, when he gets a girl in his car, this is back in the day, he's like, I just pop in too short and let the, let the music tell her how I feel. So you know that's that's how that's why. So, I but you, it. but you, the guy in real life, it has never been like that. You've never been a guy who's like you need. Okay, let me just. This is a, a small <laughs> confession. It's a small confession. Your wise man laughing, yo. He knows it. <laughs> and there, it's times where I literally turn into short dog, and like literally, I'm not in control anymore, and I'm I'm short dog, and it works. It, it works for me at time. like. There's a lot of chicks out there who. Well, they want that experience. They want that right there. So sometimes in the middle of the night, I turn it too short. I'm fucking. I, I, Will you already be like high or drunk or something? And you're just like, here I, it comes, here I, it comes. I'd be in the moment. Yeah, we're hanging out. Everybody's chilling out. Next thing you know, I'm up on the back of the couch dropping my. And she's right. stuck it in there. Right. Like, what the fuck are you doing? And, and you're like, like, short dog, yeah. bitch. I, I, right, yeah. But to, but to get a. And it happens. How does initial. It happen? conversation was probably not as rude but then once they inside and everything's cool then short dog come out somebody you know yells I mean? out oh my god too short just rammed his she's like no he didn't that's todd <laughs> <laughs> exactly but it's not it's too short yeah so you know I, so you're a mix is what you're saying if you don't watch me i will go in the bathroom so fast knock her down come back out and Straight and that really does happen and and, and still with the young chicks so you just turned 47 years old you're no you're no spring chicken i'm I'm little, seriously considering some kind of like counseling to kick the young pussy habit. Like seriously, like it's it's. A Why? Why would you? What's wrong with it? Are you dissatisfied? I don't know. It's like, man, have you ever? Nope. Have you ever woken up in the morning? This happened to me very recently. This is like I'm having these moments of clarity, and this chick is like, a, "Your birthday is coming up." I'm like, "Yeah, birthday is Sunday." She's like, "Oh shit, my father's birthday is Sunday." I'm like, well, how old is your father? He's nope. like two years younger than me. I'm born on the same day. <laughs> oh, God! I knew it was going there. And I'm like, are you sure that you're that you you're clearing the head on this? Like you're banging the dude who's like your dad. You're big, you're bigger than your dad. Older than your dad. <laughs>
That's that. I don't know, man. It just. But in a weird, perverse way, it is a turn on. It's a turn on for them, and f- to be honest, men do like having that like younger well, shit. I don't in a wh- day and time where a lot of females, grown women, didn't grow up with fathers, and that is that's. I mean, I'm learning that that's really an issue. Like they need, Hell yeah, they need that. Somehow they're getting that father thing out, and they're freaking you at the same time. It's God, weird. isn't that good? It's good, though, for you. It's positive because you're helping them. It's good in the moment, but afterwards you might be like, uh. Well, afterwards. I want to get me a young chick. (laughs) (laughs) You ever been married, Short? Nah, I I was engaged once for about two weeks. You never got, you're not married? I barely, I lived with my girlfriend once for like five months and then. Oh, hold on. Real quick. I got to stop real quick. Hey, Saif. This is too short. Right. <laughs> yeah, he professionally fucks women. Oh, but he was on the uh, surprise. He was on the the couples therapy show. Oh, he was. But I wasn't married. See, ah, why don't you shut the fuck up? Hey, why are you mentioning why reality you shut show? Shut the fuck up. We were, Wait, who are you on with? A girl, a girlfriend? A friend of mine, Monica, main, Monica Payne, and we were. Uh, it's main piece. That's your main piece. We had no. We had the story was we had dated back in the day, mm. a little, little, little something, and we were just you know they asked us would if they asked me if I would do the show. And, and oh, I, so you're saying the reality show was. For TV, well, no, it, you I, liked her. She was your chick. Yeah, we wouldn't got the therapy. The therapy was real. That was real. You yeah. tried it. We, we weren't getting therapy as a couple. We were getting therapy as a potential couple. Like, could, you, it. could you give us some conditioning to go into this relationship? Oh, with? I see. That, that was the angle. See, there's a lot to do here, Ebro. Um, Ebro, you want to go around that way? Therapist. <laughs> um, that chick was hot on that show. What really? Uh, she better have been. She was a short dog. Oh, the therapist. Oh, she was. I want to give her the fuck the therapist. Doctor Jen. Yeah, I want to give Doctor Jen the Sheboygan. Nah, I didn't. I was. I went in there with my with my Todd game. I didn't go on the, the show with too straight. Like that's the same show. The show that I did is the show that DMX did. He did the first season. I did the second season. Right. And they hired me, thinking that I was gonna come on there like start crying. Well, you know he he was out. He was a damn fool in that show. Yeah, he, he went in. <laughs> he was like, bitch, I wish I'd never married you. You know, they thought I was going to do that shit. I just, I went on there with my Todd game. and was like, no, I'm really trying to change. I'm really, you know. Trying, trying to get change. over it. Yeah. All right. Uh, know, Ebro just bum rushed the room. Ebro is from Oakland. I'm from Oakland. I was born at, well, I was born in Berkeley at Alta Bates Hospital. I was raised on 55th of San Pablo. There we go. Here we right go. Right there. Um, but I didn't realize that Too Short actually fucked me up until I just heard him talking right now. <laughs> Why? What did he mean? Why did he fuck you up? One of the first tapes I had was Born to Mac. You know, I'm from... You know, the bay. What grade? What grade? Um, I was in the, was that 85? So I had to be 83. You were like 10? I was 85, right? 85. So I was like. Born in the Mac was 87. 87. But Freaky Tales came out first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, um, I was had ten years old grade. in that range. Yeah, ten, eleven, was that sixth grade. Sixth grade, grade, like twelve, maybe. He was a grown man in your own mind, right? He felt grown. <laughs> I mean, I, you grown. know, we was hanging out. You know what I'm saying? We was moving around. That was when your parents would let you ride your mongoose. Yep, down <laughs> San Pablo. First two short time. Elementary school. Yeah. Elementary school. So. I'm not married. These two gentlemen are married, right? Um, I've, I'm trying to <laughs> learn how to get <laughs> into the relationship mode. Right. Um, you know, my father uh, was hustling back in the day in Oakland and had his women, and you know what I mean. And where you can say Pippin. Yeah, but see, like my dad is my dad. You know, um, I don't know if you know the Henderson family from Oakland, Rudolph Henderson, and come on, man. Come yeah, get, get that. That's my cousin, uh, Rudolph Henderson, my cousin. Uh, what, so what does that mean to you, too short? Big Rudy. That is a big pimp uh, situation. No, Rudy could he he used to sell his dope by just leaving it parked in the car on the street, unlocked. And people would just come leave the money. No, the the buyer would come pick up the car or empty the trunk or whatever. That's oh, it. but if you did, loads. nobody would touch it. It could La- sit there. It could sit amounts. on the street for days. It could sit all on day the street night. for days, all day and night. Ain't no one touching this stuff. No. No. That's your family? That's my cousin, <laughs> yeah. It's your cousin. That's my cousin, Rudolph. Man. He was also, he came, he became, he was runner-up in um, Mr. Universe behind Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yo, oh no, Ebro, God. shut the fuck up. Man. Big Rudy, that's What are you name. talking about? This is insane. Oh my but anyway, God. that's my family. But, <laughs> North wow. Oakland, man. North wow, yeah. okay. So, at any rate, um, I'm born to Mac. I don't care what you think. I'm young and fresh <laughs> and having bank. Too short, baby. Hey, cold as hell. <laughs> <laughs> Down to rap and I'm so for real now, but short was at a time like lyrics was you know uh, uh, coming off the East Coast and they had like lyricists. But short, you never was trying to be a lyricist. I wouldn't bite into it, man. I tell you right now, if I really wanted to, I could have been a dictionary rapper with the four syllable words. I could have been, I could have been public enemy approach. I could have did all that. I was it's there, but walking through the streets of Oakland, I was walking down like Foothill Boulevard with my radio when I heard the message. 
This was 1982. I heard the message, and the, the very first time I heard it, I was like, "Oh shit! I need to be telling the story of Oakland." And it just—I've never stopped telling it. Like that was day. like the first real rap. Like rap was like party music, but mm -hmm. when the message came out, I was like, when everybody was like, "Oh shit!" They telling they, they telling what's what going started, on in the hood. What we started off with it was talking about how he predates hip hop. You know what I'm saying? He remembers the first rap records coming out. Like right. it was a different approach than a lot of people because you don't always meet and artists who've been around this long, been successful for this long. And you go do some research back in the day, like pre '85, like before Run DMC. Everything came to Oakland. Like, I, if it was pressed up, whoever was pressing up hip hop records, they were all coming from New York. But they definitely made well because sure that they was got because of Oakland. Amoeba Records on Telegraph. Yeah, um, Amoeba was there then too. Amoeba was all there. the way. Yeah. We had, um, we had what was the other spot around the corner from Amoeba that you walk downstairs? That was uh, Turtles or something like yeah, that. I don't yeah, know, some another record like store yeah, where you go in and you buy records. I mean, records was big. You know, Berkeley. Berkeley's like a suburb of of to this of Oakland day. to this day. To this day, Berkeley got two vintage record stores that are. Now, I'll tell you my first uh, Too Short experience that I fell in love with mm -hmm. was Life is Too Short, which was like, the first single off the second album. That was the first video I ever got to make. It was a, it was I was on a video music box. I was like your first hit okay. record. Exactly. Yeah, because cause honestly, the um, Born to Mac, like, like I was aware then, it didn't hit the East Coast the same way Life is Too Short. Cuss this. words, let them roll, Born motherfucking no shit, singles, goddamn asshole. No video, no poster, no commercials. A life is too short. I can picture the po you can still picture like all the artwork for it. And I remember life is too short came out. The single went to the radio. We didn't have a video yet, and it just it started getting spins, and it and it was just it was out there. And I got a call from Jive saying we need to shoot the video. They were talking about like the album cover or whatever the stuff, and I'm like I'm like dude. You can't. I don't want to do a video ever in life, ever. I never want to do a video. And I was like, I, I never, I'm like, I never want to be on the album cover. And they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm like, I'm, I want to be an underground rapper who just has this music and people don't know who made it. And they're like, that's the stupidest shit we ever heard. You got to shoot a video now. <laughs> get you the photo shoot. You got to get you the promo <laughs> tour. <laughs> Yo. Is that the video? No. Nah. Nah. If you see the video, the I video is um, dirty raps to my East Side fans. Yeah, you gotta look at that evolution of the uh, jeans. <laughs> <laughs> now, now we used to like as kids, <laughs> as kids growing up in the Bay Area, you would hear Too Short stories, right? So Too Short would walk through the mall with all his jewelry on. Oh yeah, over by the Z Man. What, what was that mall? That little mall right there yeah. where they had Z Man. East my mall. East my mall. Yeah, no and he would man. walk through there with all his jewelry on. We thought that was the crazy. Pull up in the Cadillac. The, the truth. Vogue, on the album cover, he would, would drive, drive around, around the city. The city. Wow. <laughs> now, uh, other people don't know this also about Too Short. You might be the first independent rap artist because you sold your tapes out of the trunk of your car at the drug Literally. spots. Literally. Yeah. It, even before we had a car, we would just catch the bus. You just have the tapes in your pocket. You just have a bag of tapes and you go everywhere. The only place we sold tapes was where drug dealers sold drugs. The logic was they, they I mean, listen, cash. Yeah, and listen, you're going to have some crack. The least you could do is have a good album to listen and to when you're hot. And, and look. Let me, tell you something, let me tell you something that he can relate to. See, now, I moved to Oakland at the age of 14. I started out in L.A. LA. Okay. I hooked up with my rap partner, Freddie B. He's born and raised in West Oakland. Mm -hmm. Spent a lot of time in juvenile hall. He went to senior camp. He did all the, 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 the thug routine. The delinquency shit. The thug tour. And then, he moved, tour. and then he moved to East Oakland. So he's from Campbell Village in wow. West Oakland. Okay. So now my rap partner, like, you you from East Oakland. You can't go to Campbell Village. Nah. You know what I'm saying? You from deep West Oakland. East Oakland is like another planet to you. So here's a guy who could jump on the bus and jump off anywhere and people knew him. So he, it was his idea. He was like, man, we were at the house messing around making little homemade tapes. He was like, man, we could sell this. This is hot. I'm like, sell it where? He's like, just come on, let's just go sell it. I'm like, all right, let's go. And we walked to a Royal Park, which is, you know, drug dealer central. And we just popped it in somebody's car and asked them to buy it. And they're looking at us like, why the fuck would we buy your tape? Like, we don't even know you. Who was making the beats on those? We were using other people's instrumentals. All the 12 inches that were coming out. Yeah, we just flip it over and just rap on it on the I would get on them B-sides so fast that people in Oakland thought those were my records. <laughs> right, that's like it is today. Yeah. You predated what now happens. <laughs> well, now nah, and that's my point. Everything that you like the style of rap that you hear like a 2 chains do now, that's early too short. All that's Bay Area 
uh, uh, kind of hustle talk, but slow. You see how he pieces his lines together like it's real it's slow. It's definitely this weird. I've always noticed it in hip hop. There's this weird Oakland Atlanta connection. Yeah, but even early, a lot of people, even early Cash Money. Cash Money is a. No, but I'm saying they got a lot of Atlanta. I think got their style from somehow from. Well, no, Short moved to Atlanta. Back in the in the later '80s, when you know when the rap really started getting in arenas, and you know Run DMC had already kicked the doors down and whatever, I was um, I would do a lot of shows with artists from you know everywhere, be down south artists, east coast artists, and you know individually, a lot of people didn't really know me at first. Like it was a street thing. Like if you were just like watching TV and reading magazines, you're like. I, you might have missed me. Yeah. And then I get on stage and everybody was singing, the whole crowd Bitch. was singing every word with me. Yeah. And I get backstage and they go, who are you? What the fuck? How do they know you? Like, right. I don't know, bro. They just, <laughs> it's out there. Now, <laughs> by the way, what was the first big tour for you? First big tour I ever went on was um, NWA Straight Outta Compton. And who was on that tour? Shit. That was... Uh, NWA. NWA. Oh, really? with, with, who know, else? Ice Cube and Dre and all them. And then... Um, uh, that was uh JJ Fat. <laughs> JJ Fat. All brought. right. It was um, damn. Who was on that tour? Who was in the opening acts? DOC was the opening act. Yup. There you go. Um, it was really pretty much easy. I put it together. He needed me for like supporting cast. I'm trying. I'm missing. I'm missing like somebody that wasn't. No Booyah there. Tribe. They weren't around yet. Too early. Too early. That too was early back then when a dance group would open up the show. Yeah. That's <laughs> now, real quick, let's talk about Biatch, mm -hmm. which started on a song called Dope Fiend Beat mm -hmm. on, on, the, on Born to Mac. On the Born to Mac album. So the evolution of the word bitch, I heard in the Blow the Whistle song, it sounded like you was kind of tightening up a little bit because now it's gotten to a point where you don't really get the credit you deserve for well, kind of... Well, Born to Mac, the first... I mean, uh, Blow the Whistle, the first verse was just me reclaiming my, you know, my yeah. property. Like, this is mine. Right. Like don't it, don't think that it was made up from anywhere from death row to some right. comedian or whatever. It, it came from me. Right. And the only person I could give credit to before that is uh, we were highly influenced by uh, Rudy Ray Moore. Dolomite. Yeah. He, and he was he was. How did he say it? Bitch, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> he was. He said it. Go back and watch some of his movies. He he screams bitch. Is that a lot. sample of bitch on the J record? B -b -b Ooh, bitch. <laughs> yes. That's that right? That's that. <laughs> on the, yeah. Um, but my all, reference for, And for y'all, <laughs> y'all looking and watching. If you don't know Dolomite and you don't know Rudy Ray Moore, you probably that was just like underground, uh, black comedy, predating even um Richard Pryor. Man, right. I mean, those movies are hilarious. But, so, but you took that was bitch, and you took that to bitch. Our started with um me and my rap partner yeah. Freddie B. We were um we were doing these skits. We didn't we didn't know they were like skits. Like this was even before the De La Soul album or whatever. With all the skits when it started getting popular and right. Dre and everybody was doing skits. We would just we would start our shit. You probably just talking shit on it. No, we would start our homemade tapes. So I'm like, okay, this is this might sound crazy, but before 1984, if you smoked crack. You were like prestigious, and it wasn't called crack; it was called free basin. and that was something that, I mean, people admired the people that did. Like that was pretty tight. And you free basing? like it was what rich people did. So we used to pretend to free base on the tapes. Wow. So we'd be like, we'd be going <laughs> choking and doing shit like that, and then we we start pretending like this girl was. That's how we got dope fiend beat. Oh, I got it. We we pretend like this chick was with us, and we give her like a little hit, and then she abuses it. We like. Bitch, like, you know, and then it just started getting longer and longer, and one of us just yelled out, bitch, and we just kept doing it, and it would be uh, the dope fiend beat, and the dope fiend beat, the logic was that once you hear it, it's like drugs, you're like addicted to the dope fiend beat, it's the beat, it's not really what we're saying, it's the music has you addicted, all this shit is like spinoffs of uh, Parliament Funkadelic, just concepts. Do you ever have moments, though, like when you're seeing a movie and literally in the movie, the whitest white sixteen-year-old rich white girl is like, "Oh my God, you're such a biatch!" And you're just like, "Like that's literally from your shit." Yeah, it, and it made it all the way across as far as it could. No, go. it's you, Nat. I mean, it's, it's so my mom. No, if I was like, "Mom, this person was being such a biatch," my mom would be like, "Oh," <laughs> she would know what it meant. <laughs> I I knew it was the truth. About ten years ago, I was in Japan, and this guy just walks up out of nowhere, rapping in Japanese. And he ended his rap with bitch, and I was like, "What the fuck is this?" In Tokyo, <laughs> now how? That's the dope fiend beat. Yeah, funky, how's fresh. Uh. How soon after that Japanese rapper used the word biatch <laughs> did a Japanese chick? Did that happen <laughs> within a day? Hey, Ten, yeah. an hour. Twenty minutes later, yeah. <laughs> Bitches <laughs> on my mind.
You guys are missing the old man out going back. Time. Ebro's yeah. going back right now. Yo, look now. I want to point something out right there on that song. There's a bass line. Don't gong 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 gong. The funk bass line, right? That's me on the beat too. Oh, you did this beat? Yeah, I did, I did a lot of the early day beat. Yeah, hair bitch. Working in stitches. Her hair ain't really but two inches. All you bald head hoes in the Oakland world. We didn't, even, we didn't even program beats back then. We would literally like the drum machine would be playing, and if you if the if the hi hat drops out, that's us like hitting the button. Like, like missing something. Like no, 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 just that, the the, you, you the recording. The, the old school 808. You could make something drop in and drop out. Yeah, yeah. just by and hitting it, the button on and off. And I'm seriously just sitting there just playing the, the keyboard. I could let you hear that song right now and show you ten times where I fucked up. <laughs> but people were like, "You messed up. You want to go back fix?" I'm like, "No, leave all the fuck ups. I can show you." No, but that's, that's like live instrumentation. That's I can show you all like. my early songs, freaky shells, all of them, where I fucked up the words, I, I stutter, all kind of shit. I just and you just it. left it. At always, I still do that to this day. Yo, Freaky Tales was twelve <laughs> minutes long, eleven or something. Yep. yep. Freaky Tales. If you haven't spent time with Freaky Tales, um, <laughs> you spend some time. With spend, it. Gotta <laughs> spend some time. You literally have to spend time. But then the amount of music that was made around that concept of just you know telling stories about women and you know tales about fucking and sucking and all. They told all me that short. day in the studio, you can't make this record. Why can't I make this record? No one will sell it. No one wants to hear it. This is not music. You can't do this. You did something. You made you made some of the first music that I felt guilty hearing. I was like, <laughs> oh my god! No, you had to hide the two short tape. I had to hide two short tape from my mom. I wish I could, like there were so I, many kids that had to hide that music. I know it was it was really crazy. I wish I knew the number of how many asses got whooped bumping too short. Oh my god! Oh, it was mass whoopings. But think of, about how many positive. Think about how many because I've, of too short. I've had females say. I lost my virginity with you playing in the background. I'm like, nice. how is that sexy? She's like, it's not sexy, but that's all my boyfriend ever played. <laughs> <laughs> that's so what happened. They, so they relate virginity. But with what me. I was going to say about the baseline thing is fast forward to today. You had the hyphy movement in the Bay, which, you know, you were, you kind of went back and was kind of an ambassador of that. But now you have this kid, Mustard. Well, and don't, whole, don't, don't, don't. All that is Bay Area I mean, trunk music. The Little John 10-year run, was the, we call it the two-finger baseline. All you need is two fingers to play it. Yeah. Right. You know, very... Very, very seasoned non musicians could be two fingered keyboardists. Yeah. It's, it's the funk. It's, you can do it with one finger. It just, and it works. Um, okay, so at what point did you start, in my opinion, too short turned into legend status, like bona fide national legend? Early, too. But my opinion, when it was official, was when Biggie tapped you for the for Life After Death. That's when I think it was like, okay, we're asserting, we're doing a too short record. I'm going to tell you what shit changed. This is what shit changed. It changed for me. It was clear across the board that in 1996, I dropped an album called uh, Getting It. It was called Album Number 10. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know. I named it Album Number 10 because I knew at that time that no rapper had ever made 10 complete full playing albums. Right. So I, along with Jive Records, um, decided to do a press release. We thought it was, you know, it was, it, I wasn't retiring, but the retirement press release, the media showed up, I threw a huge party. The first oh, song that, that comes on the album, I'm like, it's getting close to the end, y'all, like I'm retiring. And it was just, people came out the woodworks going, when did you make 10 albums? All 10 albums went platinum? What the, like it was, it was, all 10 albums hadn't gone platinum. At that point I had like six platinum albums and I had a few gold albums. But the word was on the streets. Too short had ten albums. They was all platinum. He was retiring, and it, and it just it turned it to kind of legendary status. Yeah, I remember that. And I wasn't really in the features before that, and all of a sudden I started doing a lot of features. And that's after when, that, that's when people asking you to feature. Yeah, that's right. when it went from kind of just being a two shorts world to kind of creeping into everybody's little world. I was on Foxy Brown album, the Biggie album. I was on, Jay first, right? I was on Jay Z's first album. I was on. No second album. Reasonable doubt. You were on Reasonable Doubt. I thought it was on. I thought it was on the second one. Which no, song on Reasonable, Reasonable doubt? doubt? It was on um, Real Do Real Things. Yeah. On Jay. Yeah. Real. Do. Oh, oh, yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um. What the hell, man? You know. Well, let's not get away from getting it album number ten because, of course, that has. Cat, 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 cat. Woo! Oh. Which Flex went super hard for, and that became a big East Coast record too. Yeah, that was kind of like my first taste of. Uh, you know, New York is bumping you, <laughs> you know? You started hearing a lot, right? Yeah, Eric Sermon played a trick on me. He said, um, hey, man, I need you to come up and uh, to do your verse on one of my shows. 
I was like, all right, man. I flew up to New York. He, he didn't fill me into anything about it was on the radio or it was hot. He was like, yeah, we're just going to do it. And he didn't tell me nothing. We backstage. I think uh, Keith Murray went on, Red Man went on. They doing all this stuff. And it's Eric Sturman's turn. And then the song comes on. And the crowd fucking goes crazy. And then, you know, he does his part. And I just walk out the back and do my part. And it was at the Apollo. And I just, I've never gotten a, an East Coast reception like that. He just get backstage. I'm like, dude, what the fuck you didn't tell me? Like, you could have told me, or get, like, warned me or something. I would have came out there. So you really didn't know how hot that record was? Not to that night at the Apollo. Uh, I had no idea. That's a New York <laughs> classic, man. How is Father Dom, by the way? Father Dom, he's, he's been through some stuff. He has? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> he, he, he's, uh, you know, Keith Murray's my homie. Well, I always thought that line was hilarious, because no offense. Don't, don't take any disrespect to this. Because he goes, it's like Father Dom. It's like Keith, Keith Murray. Murray. <laughs> but to me, I was like, Father Dom ain't like Keith Murray. <laughs> <laughs> in, my, in my East Coast mind, I was like, what short do I talk about? Um, but also, we skipped, we skipped ahead of that. Well, we skipped a lot of shit. But before that album, it was the joint in 93. Was it, was it, oh, Get In Where You Fit In had I'm a Player, right? Yep. I'm a Player was a fucking player, ringer, you know. too. I was cranking out albums like every Dude, look at this. Months. You go... 87, 88, 90 comes with Short Dogs in the House. Yeah, bitch ain't nothing but a word to me. Then you got Shorty the Pimp in 92, Get In Where You Fit in 93, Cocktails 95, Getting It 96. Although Getting It's album number 10, and this only lists like seven. Oh, because th were the other ones before? Underground albums, yeah. yeah. Okay, so the first ones, no one actually even. So that added to the mystique, too. Yeah, that was you label, and yeah. Freddie first, P. The first, no, this was, this was. Right after Freddie B, I, I signed to a label called 75 Girls and made It was the albums. 75 Girls that had the three albums after yeah. Freddie B. Yeah. All right, so yeah, and then after after you dropped um, Get In Where You Fit in 93, Cocktails 95, Getting It Out number 10 in 96, then you did Can't Stay Away, You Nasty, Chase the Cat, What's My Favorite Word, Married to the Game, Blow the Whistle. I used to be able to name them. I can't name them anymore. What's your most recent album? The most recent album? I have no idea. <laughs> the E-40 joint, History. Me and E40 oh family. yeah, y'all just that was last year. I quit counting. I don't even care anymore. I'm like, you just do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting ready to make a house music album right now. Like, Are you really? Yeah, I'm, I'm going there. Y'all, yo, yo, you still live in Atlanta? No, nah, I'm in LA now. You in LA? There's this crew out of um out of Atlanta. Um, fuck, what is it called? Watch the duck. Watch the duck. Yeah. The you should listen to their music because your style of rhyming over that type of shit. Cause it's like hood shit, yeah. but it's kind of like on some EDM like trap yeah, shit. I'm, I'm, I'm messing with the uh, with the bouncing uh, electronic music. Yo, listen, too short. You don't need to do electronic. You haven't had enough chicks blow you over the years. You got to start doing this EDM shit. It's gonna oh, get even crazy. It's a whole new crazy. chunk of money. It's gonna go a whole. Oh, and listen, you just tell me where you moving at. I'm right there. <laughs> I, I want to get to a couple of things though, cause real quick. So how did the um of all those collabos? Obviously, some must stand out. Like the Biggie one must have been. Um, how did that one come together? Well, I, one of my favorite sessions that I ever did was uh, was the night we made um, The World Is Filled. Because it was like, I, I just read recently, somebody was quoting somebody and they were saying that when Biggie would do a session, it'd be like a party. And then some out of, somehow, somewhere out of the party, songs would just come out of the party. And we were at the session at Daddy's house and it was just... You flew in, you flew in specifically for this? To make the song, yeah. Okay. And... Nobody was really making songs. We were just at the studio. Like, you could hear music playing. I was kind of writing my little verse and was just kicking it. And somehow, I mean, I don't know, man. We just, I laid my verse. Uh, Puff came in. I, don't, I, I can't know. I can't really remember Puff doing his part. I know that the hook was already on there. The hook was uh, Carl Thomas. We were vibing on the instrumental and the hook was playing. And we just made the song, did the stuff or whatever, whatever. And then Biggie's like, you know, real nonchalant. Hadn't touched a pen or a paper. Hadn't, hadn't disengaged himself in any way. He was a part of the room. He was, you know, in it. He just goes there and just no paper, no nothing, and just spits that verse. He took him. I think he sat down there and he went at it once. He said, no, no, wait, take me back. And he just did it. And I just, to me, I'm I'm like, where's the pen? Where's the paper? Where, where, where just... He's like, man, I don't write rhymes. <laughs> like, never seen no shit like that in my life. Wow. Uh, you know, you got people mimicking the style now, but that, I mean, I don't know anybody that was doing that before him. What, did you uh were, did you feel honored at the time that he reached out? Like, obviously now that he's passed, the honor is clear. But did you feel honored at the time, just with how hot he was, that he wanted a song with you? Yeah, it was. It was uh, I was at a Outcast picnic. Outcast used to throw this picnic at this mansion in Atlanta and every year. I want to do that. Um, shit. 
<laughs> you want you want to do a, a picnic at a mansion? Uh, outcast. Oh, he wants to go to the oh, Outcast. Go to outcast. One. <laughs> he wants to go to the 1996 <laughs> yeah. Outcast yeah. picnic. So uh, it was a limousine parked on the grass, and they, hey, yo, hey, yo, kid, yo, son, <laughs> one of those. Check this out. And I come over, and they're like, uh, you got love in Brooklyn, and that was it. Who was that? It was, it was big, big, but oh. years later, about two years later, when he was he was really biggie. Yeah. He was like, he was like, man, you remember one time I called you over to the limo and said you got love in Brooklyn? He was like, that was me. Like he he keep telling me the story. Like he was like, man, it, he was like, New York really ain't on your shit, but there's a part of in Brooklyn where I'm from. Oh, yeah, yeah. He like, we really bump your shit. Like all my like where I'm from, we bump. That's it. why Jay loves UGK yeah, and yeah. like even even. New York back in those days used to like Spice One and <laughs> Too Short. Like it's so, like a like a small like it wasn't on the radio, but all the street. Big cats was knew one it. of them yeah. cats. He was like, I know your shit. Big knew so, all hip hop. Like yeah, exactly. Loved it so all. so he at, he had Puffy call me. You know, me and Puff we cool to this day. But he was like, yeah, man, <laughs> yo Puffy don't he ain't taking no. So the call is like either you gonna get up here, big one, she just get on the plane, get up here, get Puff Daddy style. So you know how how was the. How what was happening like East Coast West Coast beef wise when you recorded that was it going on was it like in full swing? See, to me, we look back in 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 hip hop history and look at it like there was this East West beef. But I was there. It was really Bad Boy Death Row. Yeah, right. It, it wasn't was. the East Coast West Coast beef. It was certain rappers who were like. In the I'm Bay, not, in Northern Cali, it was a little different. Like, you had people talking about it, but nobody was, I mean, we liked hip-hop. We didn't give yeah. a fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, Soul, Souls of Mischief wasn't fighting Jay Ruther Damage. No, what I'm saying was, no. <laughs> so, like, you came to New York, no problems, no issues. Like, nobody said anything about West Coast or anything? Man, my, my let me tell you where I stood on this. Right after, right after, um, because I, I, didn't, I didn't deal with that shit, man. I wasn't really, I couldn't ride with either side, because I was, you know, I lived in Atlanta. Atlanta, they was hyping the East West thing like it was a no- normal thing you do at the club. Right, like Cali in the house, they play some some, some Death Row song. Yeah, yeah. New York in the house, yeah, and it, you know it wasn't really like oh, yeah. wasn't that serious. Yep. Yeah, it was like you know. So um, I was coming to New York a lot, dealing with Jive Records. I didn't really, you know, it wasn't really like the whole West Coast of you, like they go West Coast, motherfucker, get him. It wasn't right. like that. Yeah, I, no, was, I know. But I'm... I was at a club in Atlanta right after Big got killed, and it was it was Atlanta, it was at a club called Atlanta Live. And there to get from the upstairs to the downstairs VIP style, it was this little little back staircase. You you wind down and go down. And I'm just creeping down by myself, and this dude stops. He's like, "Yo," he was like, "Man, right now this big had just got it was it was fresh." Yeah. He was like, "Right now, somebody say the word California, I'ma kill him." He was like, "And I'm sitting." There, and he said that to you. Yeah, and it's oh like my God. a bigger dude. And I'm like, it ain't nobody but me and him on the staircase. And I'm like, but he's like, but you know what? He's like. Biggie was my man, like for real, and he always said he loved you. <laughs> so I was like, "Oh my god!" Woo! <laughs> Hold on, we have. A, I have a quick. I have a quick <laughs> amendment to today's show because uh-huh. Too Short tried to get one over on me. I was right. Uh-huh. You were on. Re, you were on Volume One, not Reasonable Doubt. Real End Bombs was on um, oh, I don't know the shit. second album. No, listen, uh, it's my podcast. Yeah, that's true. Even by yeah. legends, I will not be tested. What song is that? Real End Bombs, off of. Um, Volume, Life volume one. Now, ask me if he gives a fuck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, he doesn't. Hey, so I I'm co-signed a- just on some Barry shit. I was like, yeah, 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 yeah you yeah, right. Yeah. Now hold on. When you do look at this, um, yeah. you're looking at your discography of features. By the way, <laughs> is ridiculous. The who's who, the list of both greats and near greats that you have done songs with over the years. You are a generous, generous man with your features. Too short. You did, of course, you have Biggie multiple joints because you were also on um, the Born Again joint. Uh-huh. Cocaine, MC Breed. By the way, you started all the way back. The first feature I see here is fucking D Nice in 91. Oh, yeah. Crazy. You are. doesn't remember that. There's I no mean, way you remember my man that. Derek. What's the name of that song? Any idea? Uh, if you told me, I remember. I can sing a little bit. <laughs> if you told me, I remember. I remember. <laughs> Check yourself. No shit. Oh, yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. Then you have joints with Pooh Man. We made that song at Battery Studios, Jive Studios. Uh, Ant Banks, of course. You have joint a bunch well, those, of joints. Pooh Man and Ant Banks, those are my artists. You got yeah, that's obviously you have a bunch of those. Um, uh, Tupac, of course. Uh, Jay Z, Looney's. I mean, Jay Z albums was on two, maybe Spice three. Two. You are mm-hmm. a, I think you're on a few here. I'm not. I'm not through them all. A few, a few in here. Yo, and By what? the way, is Spice One. Uh, is Spice One ever just like a friendly guy? Or in my mind, Spice One is holding a gun at all point, at all oh, times. Nah, he's a nice dude. Yo, man. Grandma. Spice One. Yo, Grandma. Nah. Maybe it's some motherfucking nah. breakfast. Yo, sure. Tell Spice One was a good dude though. That's my homie. If you if you see him, just call him Chico. 
Is that if I want to die? That's, no, that's what his family calls him. Oh, really? Yeah. But he's a regular dude because my image of Spice One is so gangster. Like, it's so... Most I mean, gangsters are nice guys. Most gangsters weird, are nice In a weird way. He had a song called Dumping Them in Ditches. <laughs> that's how mean that is. Spice was, he's, he, was he wasn't a gangster. Daz Dillinger, E-40. Oh, then you did another Jay-Z record uh, a week ago. Featuring Don't miss... The, the joint with Lil' Kim, that was Yo, big. I had my hand ready to pull up. Call me off, though. What you call it? That what was, soundtrack was that? Booty call. Yo, Yo that was a hit. That DJ. was a huge record. Yeah. That, I used to DJ for Lil' Kim at that time. That was in radio stations. That got rot rotation oh, that was everywhere. A, everywhere. That might have been like a top so 10 record. That record came out, and it started to blow up. Kim was like, yo, we got to put that record last. We used to have to perform that record last. That was one of my big songs that was on my show, too. shit. That song was so big, I had the first verse that I would sing the first verse in concert, and the second verse, I would just hold the mic out, and all the girls in the crowd would sing, sing the whole thing, second right? verse, and the crowd would be moving. No, that was the cut. Good Yo, days. speaking of um of uh, East West collabos that you've done, uh, are you, um, you going to mention his collabo with an artist named Messy Marv? Messy Marv. That's, oh, Messy Marv. Who's that? That Messy Marv, though. Messy Marv. What's that name? That's some. That's some classic Northern Cali rap. No, I thought y'all were just gonna laugh. I didn't know there was gonna be a Messy Marv oh, story. I've heard of him. Oh, I didn't know Messy there was a Marv mess is classic Northern Cali shit. God, I'm so ignorant to. I'm so ignorant to the Northern Cali scene. Not nah, well, but you gotta realize there was a whole independent music movement. Brother Lynch hung. Messy Marv. I know that. I know Brother Lynch you know, hung. You know what's beautiful E40, about the Bay Area? All that's independent. The Bay Area, you have a whole. I mean, uh, dozens of artists. Who drove around in nice cars, jewelry, did a lot of shows, sold a lot of units, you know, independent, and had pretty good damn careers, and they never even really got popular in LA. Right. It was just, there's a following of people who like Bay Area music. It's yeah. like Portland, Oregon, Seattle. Seattle, Washington. yeah, the whole even Northwest. Like, even like Denver, Colorado, yeah, Idaho, like, Idaho like, popping. popular in the Bay. I mean, in your mind, you don't give a fuck that nobody out there is Because you're good. And you're getting money. And it's you're jumping on airplanes. You're like, you like... You because where did Mac Dre, where was he killed? Like In, in Kansas, Kansas City. City. He had like a show in Kansas City. Like, you yeah. would think, why would a rapper from the Bay Area be in a But Midwest? it connects to other random cities yeah, out there. Was, Kansas City huge. to this day. Like, that's our sister city or some shit. Even really? Though, it's a huge market for you? It, I mean, just what they don't give a fuck how... Minuscule it is. They love Bay Area music in Kansas City. It's just wow. I don't got I don't know what that connection is, but and a lot of it has to do with people just going through that town and identifying with them. And Mac Dre was out there moving around early for long periods of time. Some AFC West so, shit. So Jay, there. so Jay Z always <laughs> Some Jay -Z AFC always, West shit. Jay Z always <laughs> tells real. me the story right where he goes to the Bay and he's performing, and I think it was Lenny S was like, "Yo, Jay, you need to rock to this beat," and. As he's about to end his show, he throws on Blow the Whistle. At the Coliseum, the Oakland Coliseum. Yeah. Mm. And he said the place, like, literally people jumped out of their seats into the aisle to go ham. That's how the Jay-Z version that we know right. happened Just because he saw record. that record. At that same moment, that's when the dude was, uh, we played for Boston or somebody was talking bad about Oh, uh, the LeBron. Wizards. He played for the Wizards. Yeah, he was talking bad about LeBron and Jay just was like, man. He called me personally, like, send me that instrumental. <laughs> Who did that instrumental, by the way? Lil that's John. Lil, Lil John. Oh, that's a Lil John beat? Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that. You was at that show at the Oakland College. I was there sitting up in the box seat. And Jay was like, why didn't you tell me? Because if I would have known you were there and I brought you out? Oh, my. Movie. It the roof would have came off. You wanted to make sure the roof was all right then. No, he was trying to protect the Coliseum. <laughs> save, save the Coliseum. Thank you, man. No, the roof needs to come off the Coliseum. That shit is a piece of shit. All right, real quick. <laughs> now that the Nets got a new stadium, we, oh, the Warriors have officially have the worst stadium in the NBA. Yeah. So what you need to do is just like, you know, Oakland's just like Brooklyn. You need to go, figure out a way to be, become a businessman at that level, partner with somebody and get you a stadium and put your name on it, do like eight shows at the Coliseum. That would be really Or at the new Oakland Coliseum. Man, if they do Like Jay went rushing. They ain't building shit in East Oakland. They're moving They're not, right? to the suburbs. They are. <laughs> I heard they was going to try to move the Coliseum out of there and put it in San Francisco. Shit, they want to get the 49ers out of San Francisco. <laughs> shit. Yo, uh, who, who else are the biggest stars uh, in Oakland, period of all time. Besides uh, you, who else is like that you see around in the Oakland celebrity circuit? I don't know. Is it like fucking Tim Brown? I, I don't know who it is. Marcus Allen. Who are the biggest stars in the history Pointer of Oakland? Sisters. They had hits. Pointer Sisters. Tony, 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 Tony. Uh, that's a big one. Uh, Bay Area, Sly and the Family Stone. That's huge. Sly had members from from our, from, from both sides. The Bay. Uh, um, Tower Power. Tower Power. That's that's Oakland classic. Tower Power. 
That's what about Ebro? Anyone ever throw Ebro's name in the hat? Never. No, <laughs> doesn't happen. He's been on reality Sway. shows. Sway, though. Sway, Sway. Oakland I lived in Hayward. So I lived in Hayward. <laughs> lived in Hayward County. I still got my library card. Wait, why were you in Hayward? Wait, hold on. You haven't heard when he claims this every once in a while. No, I've I'm never in heard Hayward the Hayward County, son. What? He lived there till he was like five. <laughs> no, no, from like seven to. Nine. Wait a Seven minute. Why nine. was your mom in the Bay Area? Who was your mom smashing out in the Yay? My mom's military. No, my mom's brother, who's like probably like thirty five years older than her. You know what I'm saying? Something like hood. That. that. First of all, that's hood. Keep going. Uh, his daughter moved out there and got married out there, so we went to go live. With, I guess that's that would be her cousin. Okay, that'd be her cousin. And so I was, she wasn't I was great there. right then. No, she was trying to start a new life. Oh, she, she had two tried. kids. Was this after the gang banging here in the Bronx? Yes. Yeah, way after. Way after. She had a seven year old. She was already seven. What, oh, yo, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, that was like, she was Sai's like mom used to be a gang banger son. in a Puerto Rican gang in the Bronx. Sai's mom almost killed a woman. She started a new life at 22. <laughs> She'd already <laughs> lived three lives by then. <laughs> yo, my mom already went to jail. She started a new Her life husband at died. Her, a new man was whack. At 22, 23, she was like, I'm going to go west. You have one night, like we all in our normal lives, uh -huh. normal men, we have one night that we go, you know what? That night couldn't have been any better. We killed it. We got we got a bunch of pussy that night, blah, blah. Oh, do you have a night, do you have one night in history, pussy-wise, that is just the pussy greatest wise? of all time that you like? Yo, your questions are retarded. Oh, though. man. That's a great question. <laughs> Too many to name? That's a great question. Um, <laughs> Pussy-wise. I don't know. Just, I don't know. I, I'd probably... Uh, I'm not gonna say it's the greatest night, but it's like I look back and say, did I really do that? I, one night I let about four or five girls just run a train on me, and they took turns all the way to the last condom, and then it got to the last condom, and the girl blew me, which was I was I was worn out. She blew me, put it on, she got ready. To, another girl got ready to sit on it, and they started fighting like, bitch, this the last condom. I don't want to get it hard as mine. No, <laughs> that's a great story. That happened in real life. By the way, I have one last question. I ask detail that. Does that mean that? During that, <laughs> you started over multiple times. I had to I, till the last condom. So you went through. I don't even. I can't. Yeah, I you're on a different bragging, level. I was bragging to my homeboy one day. Was, we saw these four hot chicks. And I was like, I fucked all four of them. I was like, I ran through their whole crew. And he was like, Are you sure that you ran through their crew, or did they run through you? I was like, Damn, same difference. Yeah. Hey, short. This has been an honor, man. Thank yeah, you man. So much. I'm not a whore anymore. He's not. Yeah, he is. Fucking liar. Yeah, you're a fucking liar. Is what you are. <laughs> fucking liar. Hey, you ruined my life. Born to Mac and Too Short ruined my life. That's why I can't have a successful relationship to this day. To this day. Yeah. You, I think Say your, your dad may have played a part in that. Can too. I ask you a question? <laughs> you like the fuck? See, he oh, you don't want me to talk to you like that. <laughs> um, short. Thank you for everything, bro. Hey, I've ruined my own life too, man. Don't yo, yo, what, how that verse start? I saw you walking down the street and I had to stop. Turn up my radio and drop the top. <laughs> Say you look so good, you're so fine. That's that's the oh shit. Yeah. Woo! Oh shit. Got that man. feeling. That, that was, was the, the shit. whole point. You ride down the street, top down, see a little cutie, get in the car. I have her suck your dick. End of the end of the end of conversations. God. Too Will short. Will Chamberlain, man. Will Chamberlain. Yo, um Will Chamberlain. Ten thousand what was his number? Ten thousand? Oh, he said 20. 20. What, what's your number? <laughs> what's your number? I saw that movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's a movie that chicks like, what's your number? I can't name my number. I, I, is it over? Is it? Is it clearly over 1,000? <laughs> he started laughing. Over 1,000. Is the camera rolling? I hope so. So you have been counting this whole time. I knew it. I'm writing a book, man. It's in the book. And okay, fine. You don't have to give us the number because I know it's in the book. But can you tell us something that it's over? Like, is it at least? Can you just imagine if I released the photos, what would happen? Do you have photos? photos? I've got like, years worth of pictures of. Just now this is what I do know that I was gonna leave out an interview, but since we went there, you know how many bad joints that we know right now that was popping that let too short smash that when I was coming up in radio and then I started radio in 1990. See, these are like households or that. These women have gone on to have Yeah, wives. they went on half lives. Yeah, 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 yeah. Husbands. Yeah, yeah. And... Can't, can't do that. So you're not going to call out their names? I might do it in the book. Nah, you can't. That goes against the code. Yeah, you can't break you the can't, G code. You can't break the code, man. I, I got pictures. Yo, fam, if you I'm break let, the code. I'm going to let the picture speak for themselves. No, listen. I, if you break I, the code. Hey. Listen, if you, listen, it'll never. Like, there's already been Universal dudes. There's already pizza. dudes out here right now. <laughs> rappers. That. 
The way I was raised, I look at them like, you're not supposed to talk hey. about that. You're not supposed to go at somebody else's wife. You're not supposed to say you fuck somebody else's wife. You're not even supposed to do that because you go, we all come up, we all get pussy. It happens. You're not, if too short breaks the code, you will dismantle. Picture, not a name. Not a you name will dismantle. You can change I everything I was raised on. Time continuum. It, exactly. That, it's, that year, it'll be some messed up Thanksgiving dinners. The world right will be sucked dinner. Yeah, but not even that. But then cats coming up now won't know that there's a code. Like, Hey, Ebro, real quick, for minimum 2,000? You at 2,000? At least 2,000? 2,000? What year is this? Let me see. 2013. 2013 now. Uh, let's see. Man, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, quite a few. I'm on some Will Chamberlain shit, man. It's been a lot. <laughs> I love him. I went, I went on about a five-year run of Menage a Trois. Like, I wouldn't even do one girl at a time for about five years. I was like, I was arrogant. <laughs> and that was every day? Uh, not every day, but I was just arrogant. So like a girl, you meet a girl and she's hot and you're like, yeah, I like you, but where's your friend? Or I'd have, I'd already have. A, or you'd have a friend. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> I had, I had one menage a trois with two average I'll tell you chicks, the secret, and I celebrated man. for a year. I'm gonna tell you the secret, and don't ever, secret. If, if you want to keep it past on whatever, the secret is yes, to yes. make sure that your best friend is always a female, a bisexual female. That's your best friend. That's the secret. Your best friend is always shit. a bisexual female. All right, I got but it. You gotta be hot though. Uh, hot, yeah, she she got to be hot bisexual female. Well, she yeah. can't just be some sloppy, nasty, fat All joint. Right. Yeah, no, I get it.